Hey, welcome back. It's time for Tech Tuesday. MIT is using some video editing magic to show the power of deep fakes. You've probably heard that term recently. Mm -hmm. And Samsung fans have something to look forward to this summer. Some new phones. Joining us live with more on this week's top tech news, we welcome back Greg Nibbler with Digital Trends. Good morning, Greg. Good morning. How's it going? We're doing well. Yeah, just trying to, you know, keep cool. Fortunately, right. the newsroom's usually freezing, so so we're all good Hanging over out here, here in the summer. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, we we just saw these uh, these foldable phones on our on our tease video here and we were very gee whizzed. Yeah, so let's talk about that. So Samsung has a big event coming up on August 5th. This is a semi-annual event they have called Galaxy Unpacked, where they showcase their new products for the second half of the year. And this year, it's, uh, like I said, August 5th, but all going to be virtual, which is different like everything else now since everything in person is canceled. So it'll be kind of interesting how they pull it off, but there's going to be five new products, they said. But let's talk about these phones. So one of them is going to be the Galaxy Note 20. That's when we know it's going to be coming out. It's kind of their giant flagship phone. It comes with the stylus and all kinds of different things you can do with it. Three cameras. It's got augmented reality features. So that's going to be a real highlight for them. But the other one is this foldable phone. So they've already come out with one before. Last year, they had the Galaxy Fold, which came out. It didn't, uh, it didn't really hit right away. It had a few issues when it came out. The screen kind of folded and so, or, or peeled back actually. So there were some issues, but now they've, they've refined it and they've got what's going to be called the Galaxy Z Fold 2. And by fold, I mean, it's an actual foldable screen. So the entire screen will fold over. We think it's going to be kind of like a, a book that you open up. We haven't seen it for sure. We've seen some kind of teases and leaks, but it's probably going to be something along those lines. It's going to be about 6.7 inches again by, by what we think it's going to be. It's also going to have a really high price tag most likely. But the thing I wanted to ask you too, and this is, this is a big debate for a lot of people in tech too, is, is this something we need? Is this something we want to have that foldable screen? Is it valuable? So, so I want to ask you too, is this something you would use? I mean, it, it would be like, if say you were at like a, well, if there were festivals going on or something like I could just stick it in my pocket, it would fit easier, I guess. Maybe. But I would say I'm just such an iPhone person that I don't know that I would switch just yeah. for a foldable phone. I think for me, it would depend on if the screen, yeah. like, it, are you able to, does folding it protect the screen? Because that might be something to consider as someone who frequently drops their phone more mm. than they would like. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would think that folding it over time would actually break down the screen. Right. I, I don't know. I guess I don't know how it works. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of uh, t questions about that too. So they've done a lot of testing, showcasing how it can fold over and over and not break. You're right, though. It does need to fold on the inside because I'm the same way. My my phone is cracked right now. If I could show you it, uh, but <laughs> it, it's it's yeah. So I'm used to that part. But uh, but yeah, I think it's it's interesting in the fact that you could use it almost as a mini tablet. But the price tag, the last one came out about two thousand dollars for the phone, which is more than some high end laptops. Yeah. Wow. So we don't know exactly what the price is going to be on this, but I'm going to guess it's somewhere in that range. So yeah. it's still kind of a luxury item right now, but we'll see where they can go with the tech. I mean, they must yeah. think there's going to be a demand for it if they keep trying to make it, right? I don't know. Yeah. I guess yeah. just like, because Yeah, there's we some can. people that will buy it. Sure. Yeah, okay. anything, anything high tech. We'll see, <laughs> mm -hmm. we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I've, I've had this phone screen replaced two times, Greg, so you're... You're in, you're in good company here. <laughs> hey, uh, so switching, switching topics a bit, uh, I know MIT, uh, trying to make this point about deep fakes, they put together a really kind of unsettling project. Yeah, so this is a, a new one that came out. So it's kind of on the anniversary of the moon landing, which was actually July 20th, 1969. So 51 years ago yesterday. And so what they put out, and, and I really want to talk about this because a lot of people are probably sharing this video and seeing it and, and confused about what it is. And it showcases Richard Nixon, where originally he gave that speech talking to the astronauts and that they had landed and all of that stuff. This was the other speech that was written which was in the case of a disaster. So this is an actual speech that's, that's out there. Of course, they didn't use it, everything went fine. But what MIT did was they recreated that press conference as though it were the bad way, as though it went the bad way. And so how they did this is they took an actor and they had him read a whole bunch of Richard Nixon lines to where they have an artificial intelligence that ended up matching his voice to it. So anytime this guy spoke, it sounded like Richard Nixon was saying it. And then they had him read that speech, the disaster speech. They matched that up with the footage of Richard Nixon and then used facial recognition technology to map his facial expressions 
to Nixon's to where it really looks like he's reading it and saying it. And they, they showcase this video of the speech, you know, of, of in the event of a moon disaster. And the part of the reason they want to do this is just showcase where this technology has come from and how far it's advanced. They're not trying to trick anybody or anything like that, but it's just saying like, look, you should be aware that this is where we're getting to with the tech and what they're advocating for is more transparency. They're saying for, for all these companies that are working on this kind of stuff, they should be showcasing it more. Huh. Yeah, it, I mean, it's disturbing in some ways right. because that is, you know, we, we see a yeah. lot of that on, on social media. Well, and um, I'm thinking there's already people out here who don't think the moon landing was real. Right. So I hope this doesn't add fuel to the fire. Oh, it will. Yeah, they'll, I know. They'll see that. Internet. They'll share that video. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's a it is a lesson for everybody. Deep fakes, man. You got to learn about them and and look at things with a critical eye yeah. online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very yep. interesting, Greg. Thank 100%. you so much. Yeah.